Hey guys, this is Simon. Hello guys, so this is Mike Kao. Today I'm with Mike. Mike is one of my friends in Shanghai mm -hmm. and he also runs a channel, right? Yeah. What do you do for a channel, Mike? Yeah, my channel is about uh, uh, Swedish lifestyle and the travel logs around Europe, especially in uh, Scandinavia countries. Okay, great. Then this time, uh, because of the, the virus pandemic, I came back to China. So mm -hmm. I'm doing vlogs in China as well. Okay, cool. So today we are in this wonderful park in Songjiang. Mm -hmm. So Mike, why we are here today? Uh, we are going to shoot some uh, video footages about uh, interesting topics. And uh, we are going to give you also a view about this beautiful area. Okay, cool. Let's just do this, okay? Yes. There you go. Okay. All right, Mike. One question I would like to ask to you is that like, have you noticed people would like to eat those wild animals that like people from outside of China, they probably have never think of? Yes, it is. Uh, it actually can trace back to our history about our Chinese uh, medicine. Mm -hmm. So the, the medicine things like you have the different part of the, the wild animal, like uh, the reptiles, maybe right. snakes. Mm -hmm. uh, you sink the snake into a bottle with wine mm -hmm. and keep them for uh, a while. Yeah, then you drink, you drink the, years, yeah. the alcohol and people believe that can make your body getting healthy. Yeah. And uh, it's all about uh, like which part of the animal that you get can benefit your body's part. Mm -hmm. So if you have like a, a tiger's penis, then we believe i think it is like superstitious yes yeah, some, <laughs> some sort of superstitious yeah. yes then can make you like sexual functioning working better than before which i think it's totally doesn't make sense i mean they probably don't have any scientific proof for that right yes how do you like validate this kind of like belief <laughs> yes that's right because maybe uh, in chinese tradition medicine we believe uh, the, the merge of the energy mm -hmm. so if you took some like animals uh, energy when you eat the, uh, the the part of the animal it's like you absorb the energy oh, yeah. from the animal and then you you merge this part of energy into your body then make your body working better Okay, uh, the second thing I would like to ask you is that you notice in the West, there are a lot of frozen food, right? But yeah. in China, traditionally, people don't like those frozen food, especially for my grandparents' generation. Mm -hmm. They think if you froze the food, then like uh, you actually damage the quality of the food, right? Do you yes, think that's I the heard, case in China? I heard the same case from my grandmother as <laughs> okay. well. So if we like slice the meat, Mm -hmm. when you just uh, sacrifice uh, a lamb mm -hmm. and then the Chinese people like believe it the meat is like more tender so when, when you cook it directly like then the meat will taste much better than much better yeah. but which actually I I think so actually I have the same I don't know believe I mean like but just the, several days ago just give you a like quick example we ate a fish mm -hmm. and then that fish was frozen and I can tell the fish wasn't tastes as good as the one we ate like several days ago which wasn't being frozen so yeah. I don't know that's that's kind of weird but one point I want to point out is how do we treat the animal mm -hmm. so in China maybe you have heard like slice yes. the meat when the donkey is still alive then that's very crucial and brutal thing which I, right. I'm not right. uh, agree but right. if, if you if if this is come to like a fish or crab which I'm okay to get along with, you know. But if you steam the lobster alive, alive yeah. I, I think it's too crucial. I mean, uh, sometimes I, I cannot okay, so uh, have it. I don't know, like, how do Westerners like slaughter those lobsters? How uh, do they, is I, I there think, like a process they can like kill I think, the uh, animals <laughs> before like, steaming them? I think it? It, they use the electricity to, oh, to kill the animal. Okay. But uh, it will make the blood like yeah. uh, stay in the muscle of the animal which make the taste of the the muscle texture is uh, not that good i see okay yeah so the the blood has like certain kind of uh, flavor stay in the muscle then you have to boil it mm -hmm. let, let the blood come out which okay. is not good for for the taste okay yeah okay cool all right yeah shall we just switch to another spot yeah that's right okay, okay. cheers all right, Mike, we just got to another beautiful place. Yeah. So let me ask you another question, okay? okay. 
personally, you have been living in China and Sweden for a fairly long time, right? Yeah. I would say like in 2020, we can officially say China has already entered a cashless society, right? Everywhere you go, you don't need to, virtually you don't need cash at all, right? You oh, can yeah. just use your phone to pay whatever you want. So can you tell me your opinion about cashless society? Yes, the, the positive part is uh, you don't have uh, to take like a thousand of money and walking around to pay whatever you want to pay. And uh, it's, it's quite uh, convenient when you only got your cell phone, like uh, you can go around and uh, mm -hmm. all the shops accept like uh, WeChat Pay Correct. and uh, Alipay. So this is uh, quite a, a positive side. Let me just interrupt you right mm -hmm. here. Just, uh, what about like Sweden? I'm always curious, like, do they have this kind of cashless payment? I mean, for the developed countries, their credit system is quite good. So they don't have like any yeah, incentive okay. to move forward to I this see. direction. And okay. also, they are quite aware of uh, privacy. Ah, I see. This is uh, the background, like maybe in Sweden, it's a little bit uh, laggy compared okay. to us. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, we have to concern certain thing is the privacy of the data. And uh, I mean, a cashless society, which is good, like you can prevent like robbery on the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so because you don't carry any cash. Yeah, I remember 20 years ago in Shanghai, there were a lot of like pocket picker, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's there were right. thieves. But nowadays, there are no, no th yeah, <laughs> yeah, to correct, pick up like, your, your pocket. Because there's no cash in your like, pocket, right? Yeah, but uh, one thing I want to point out is uh, how to access the data. Mm -hmm. because all the, the money are like digitalized. It's stored in somewhere in the data center. Mm -hmm. So if someone has the authority to access that, that data, then to abuse that data, that will make problem. I mean, you prevent all the like normal uh, civilian walking on the street to do criminal. But finally, maybe you will meet some like more severe uh, criminal in mm -hmm. the back end in the computer system because they got the authority to access the data. Yeah, I have the same same like idea as well. All the information are like stored in a certain place mm -hmm. and we need to make sure like the people who can access those information don't abuse those information, right? And I don't know if you have experienced that, but on WeChat, I feel like whenever I talk something with my friend and mm -hmm. then out of nowhere, WeChat will like recommend some like advertisement which mentioned in my like chatting history with my friend, you know? Yes. The, so that's kind of make me feel like suspicious. That's a, a, a point we have to really think about that. Okay. Because in the future, maybe everyone's money is attached to a certain IT center. I see. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, Mike, we just switched to a new spot. Yeah. It's a, so, yeah. It's a nice uh, traditional Chinese wooden gate. Not authentic, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> But you got like two lines behind us, watching us. Anyway. All right, let's get started. Mm -hmm. yeah, another topic. So, yeah. you know, in China, I feel like uh, beating up your own kids is fairly, considered fairly normal, right? I mean, like, yes. when I was a kid, like, I got beaten up by my parents all the time. But I know, like, in the West, you can actually end up into jail for, like, beating up your own kids, right? Yes. So, what do you think about this? I mean, for, for example, in Sweden, if you like even pet or like slap yeah can you slap his slapping the face is definitely a child abuse <laughs> oh okay Sweden. okay so if the kid go back to the school mm -hmm. and tell the teacher about their experience about child abuse okay even say like my mother beat me some like one day in the okay evening, then you will find really uh, restrict uh, law enforcement to the parents i see so the, the very uh, severe penalty can be in the jail for wow. certain years. Okay. So in Sweden, you have to be very careful how the way that you treat your, your, okay. your child. So Chinese uh, parents, when they just uh, arrived into Sweden, maybe they don't realize such a law enforcement in Sweden. So something like happened yeah i yeah. heard like a lot of like similar cases happen in like the u.s or canada like mm -hmm. traditionally you, because traditionally people think like it's fairly normal to beat up your own kids because it's 
my kids, right? Yeah. Actually, this is some kind of like wrong mindset. This is my kids. You own this yeah. property or something. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so. Have you got the idea from your parents saying like, uh, I beat you because I, I aimed to give you something correct to do in the future because I'm Yeah, I mean, that's just imprinted in our mindset, right? Yeah. Uh, it's like they beat you because they want you to behave properly. It's for your own goodness, right? Yeah, so, that's right. Well, I mean, that's, that's kind of tricky because I grew up in this environment. I already adopt this kind of like logics. I think this is some kind of also a kind of like a selfishness about the parents mm -hmm. because the parents maybe don't want to their kids like play around too noisy and getting louder and louder. So they beat up the kids. I think like beating up the kids is the easiest way for yeah. parents to... It's so intuitive. Like you just beat them and then they will just follow your order. Yeah. They, I think it's too brutal, especially in nowadays, right? Yeah. In the 21st century, like beating up your kids, it might correct them at first, but at the same time, it will have a huge negative impact. Yes, that's right. From my opinion, I think it's 100% should be stopped and mm -hmm. treat the kids in a correct way, which is Maybe more nice rational, way. right? Yeah. Maybe more rational, try to talk why you shouldn't behave yeah. like that. So try to convince your kids by logic instead of just using your force. Yeah, maybe different people have different opinion. Maybe they think uh, it didn't work, then <laughs> ended up being some kind of a variant. But uh, yeah, I don't think uh, it's a correct. It's gonna be tricky to like end this kind of tradition, but... Yeah. But today is just a short discussion about this topic. Yeah, we can talk about this maybe in the future. Yeah. Know. This can go on and on, right? Yeah, that's right. All right, let's move on to another topic, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of like foreigners, they come to uh, China. Uh, there's one thing that they were like very much, like that is the delivery system in China, right? Yeah. I mean, like in the middle of the night, you can still order like anything you want. And then a guy will ride their lovely scooter and send to a place. Probably only charge you for like one dollar, like at most like 10 quai, right? Yes, of course. So what do you think about the delivery system in China? So firstly, uh, I want to say is the delivery system in China is very efficient and the cost to you way less than uh, Europe. Oh, really? So yeah. how much does that cost like on average in Sweden, let's say? Uh, basically, in the country, Sweden, if you want to buy something online, then it will deliver you like one or two days after. Okay. But uh, it will cost you... Uh, 30 crowns to 50 crowns around which, which is, is like, uh, like uh, 30 RMB or more or less okay so, so yeah I would say it's like more expensive than China because you know China is, is probably 10 times the size of Sweden or maybe like 50 times right yes so probably I would say most foreigners they come here they enjoy this kind of delivery system in China right? yeah but here what I'm going to say in China is because of the labor cost is too low mm -hmm. in China and uh, those delivery guys are working day and night. Of course, they, they are doing a, a pretty hard work. Correct, correct. Yeah, and uh, almost like 24 hours. Uh, yeah, I would say uh, your salary is directly proportional to like how many delivery you uh, have made, right? Yeah, that's right. So yeah, it's kind of like a tough job. In Shanghai, they probably can make, on average, it's around like 8,000 RMB, maybe? Yeah, around that. And but that's a not an easy job to do you know yeah mm -hmm. the point that i want to talk about uh, is because of the cost that's low and uh, we treat those people some sometimes like in a rough way and we don't not we but uh, like some people a, a certain yeah group. i heard a lot of like uh, news online like people they just don't treat those little deliver men very properly you know? yeah maybe like uh, in a rough way and you don't send your appreciation when you got the products mm -hmm. and uh, if you if somebody like uh, got the, the products uh, a bit later then sometimes you will get people shouting at those delivery men and uh, in a rough way i would say younger generation is better mm -hmm. like the older generation they just think yeah. like you're just doing your job and yeah. you're supposed to do a good job you know mm -hmm. also the delivery system actually play a huge part of this as well because the delivery system 
they want to attract more like customers so they always you know try to tell customers your parcel will be expected to get to your yeah. place yeah. and then the delivery guy was like they don't have any choice they have to rush you know yeah another small uh, point is uh, when people buy a product online they do not overthink about like if i really need those things and they just uh, set up the the purchase order uh, of the yeah package. you have to like you buy it and then you don't like it then you have to send it back which cost yeah. you know logistics right? yeah and also the packaging like uh, every day we have like probably billions of packages yeah. and all those things you create will, a lot of uh, rubbishes every yeah, day cardboards plastics yeah. those things will need to be addressed you yeah know? Mm. yo simon hey what's up mike such a beautiful place yeah we have a pretty nice lake this is uh i think this is like Qing dynasty style architecture uh, i'm not very like familiar with the Qing history so but so i would it say it's yeah. like a, a knock-up uh, version about the uh, forbidden palace yeah it looks pretty similar to me right, what's the topic next okay so next topic you know uh, a lot of foreigners they come to china another great thing they were think about china is that like china is super safe you know right yeah you don't see a lot of like gangster looking people here because in china we have so many cameras all over the like countries right what do you think about this narrative like uh you know those cameras actually make us feel safe you know yes so nowadays if you look on just uh, like around your local neighborhood and local community you will find like every 50 meters you will find one camera of course this is uh, a big help to catch the criminal in our city or country but there's uh, some certain uh, thing we have to be aware like if uh, these cameras are used in a proper way not abused i heard one story because uh, one of my friend and uh, he got uh, dating with somebody else mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. is uh, tracked by that girl oh really because uh, the girl has like certain uh, connections oh seriously wow yes <laughs> okay so this is uh, a quite negative case uh, <laughs> yeah yeah i mean like cameras are everywhere in china and i would say it does make us safe in some degree i mean like uh, especially nowadays i don't notice there are like thieves on the street at all right mm -hmm. because if you can spot them like then those like police officers behind those cameras they can definitely um capture them before everybody actually noticed right yeah but because nowadays the the advanced of uh, technology enables this kind of detection mm -hmm. so like by uh, face uh, recognition yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, even uh, the camera can catch your body uh, gestures oh i see and they can analyze that yeah right? and your your car plate okay. etc yeah, so for sure yeah. it's very easy to identify somebody on the street by mm -hmm. the cameras yeah for me uh there's nothing wrong like installing like all those cameras but one thing is that we need to be aware is that like those information all those information like collected by those cameras need to be put into good organizations hand right i mean like which we, we need to come up with a system prevent uh, certain people who can access those information from like abusing all those like information right yes that that's the point but uh, as you we all know we have a lack of I'm not sure we can put that in our <laughs> video. <laughs> so I'm quite concerned about this. I can just stay in this way. Yeah, I would say definitely we should come up with a system to, you know, better protect uh, people's privacy. Yeah. Uh, gonna, yeah, I think that's. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's nice. move on. Yeah, yeah. Let's... Okay, Mike, what time is it right now? Ah, it's almost like 12 o'clock. Yeah, now. it's getting a little bit like hot, right? Yeah, that's I'm right. I'm sweating a little bit. So why don't we just take a break right now? Okay, Okay. yeah. Okay, yeah, I think I'm just going to end this video right here. And if you want to see the rest of our chat, mm -hmm. maybe go to Mike's channel and show some support over there. Yeah, thanks, guys. If you are interested in my travel logs, then just come to my channel and give me support. Okay, cool. I think that's pretty much it. And if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Yeah, cheers, guys. Bye-bye.